I mean, that was really powerful, wasn't it? You can feel their passion. So um, we're going to talk about running of the, the race of life. They have similar content. Um, we're going to look at what Paul says in the first Corinthians, how he compares the running, the runners in the games, and us as Christians, the runner of our, the race of life. Shall we turn to first Corinthians 9, 24 to 25? Do we all have a Bible? I encourage you to open up your Bible to that page. That's what we will look at today. And just hold that page open, please. If you don't have a Bible, please raise your hands. We'll get your Bible. So 1 Corinthians 9, 24, 25. Beatrice, do you mind read that for us? One Corinthians nine, verse twenty four to twenty five. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Runs in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Thank you. So Paul here used the running metaphor to show that in a race everybody try their best to win. And what else do they do? Before the race, they also go through very, very strict training to perform their best. So um, we can tell there's a direct link before, um, between get the prize and the strict training. So we will have a look as uh, Christians. What are we running for? In the verse 25, it says that we do it to get a crown that will last forever. So for Christians in our race, the race of life, we're doing it to get this everlasting crown. I would like to ask you, what does this everlasting crown mean to you personally? Why are we running the race? So I list a few things up here. That's what it means to me personally. It means that uh, I get to go home, so this earth is not my home. I get to have an eternal life with Jesus. I get to live in heaven for a while. I get to talk to all the angels and all the other creations of God. And also means that there's no more stress from work, from assignment, from exams, and no more tear, no more pain, no more suffering. And most importantly, I put at the end that it means that I get to reunited with my loved ones. I believe that um, we all once have lost somebody that means dearly to us. Um, that's something we get to see once we finish this race. So that's something we're looking forward to. Um, we all get to take part in this race, not like the Olympic Games or Commonwealth Games. All those good ones, the athletes, they get selected to run the race. God is very fair. He gave every single one a chance to participate in this race. He gave everyone a chance to be able to reach your own everlasting crown. So let's have a look. Um, what do we need to do to be able to reach there, to reach our everlasting crown? Here Paul says uh, in the verse, everyone who competes in the games goes into strict trainings. So I want to break down into details about this strict training. What does it really mean? How can we make sure we will stay on the right track? We will finish our race and we will make to the goal we want to go. Uh, first, reading our Bible daily. From 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17, it says that all scriptures is braced out by God and profitable for teaching, reproof, correction, and for training, for training in the righteousness, and the man of God may be competent and equipped for every good work. So if you believe in God, we worship him, uh, worship him daily. If you believe in God, you open up to your Bible and read your Bible daily. This is something very, very special that God gave it to us. It's something directly from God. Um, we will definitely benefit from reading it daily. I have once read a research about um, forming a habit. Um, it says that if you repeat 
doing the same thing for seven days, you are on the right track of forming a habit already. So I would like to challenge every one of you, if you haven't started reading your Bible daily, um, should we all start this challenging today? Start reading your Bible at least 10, 15 minutes a day, and we will do it for the coming week. And at the end of the seven days, I believe that we can all be blessed from it. The sex, second point about strict training is prayer. Prayer is so important in our Christian lives. Uh, in Matthew 26, 41, it says that watch and pray so that you will not be fall into temptations. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. See, God understands that um, our flesh is weak. He knows that he's not pushing us to do something impossible. He says that I understand something um, is difficult for you to do, but I'm with you. If you pray, if you communicate, talk to me every day, I will make sure that we stay on the right track. We won't fall into any temptations. So it reminds me um, of um, the two stories of people, how they run their race of life. Uh, if you remember that criminal who was hung on the cross next to Jesus, um, he spent most of his time really losing his track, not focusing on the right thing. But at the very, very end of the point of his life, he recognized who Jesus is, and he recognized he needs salvation from Jesus. And he yelled out to Jesus saying that, um, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he was saved at the right moment. So when he was running towards almost the very end of his race, and he was saved because he found the right goal to focus on. On the other hand, um, the king, Isaiah, right? Um, you know how it's to the completely opposite. He had most of his life stay on the track and keeping his eye on Jesus. But towards the very end, he got really proud and he lost his focus and bad things happened. So it's a lesson for us, as long as we alive our race continues so we don't know what the result will be we can change our destiny so destination easily by either turn to God or turn away from God so what I'm trying to say here is if you keep reading your Bible every day and keep praying you will be less likely fall into temptations and get lost on your race and on also in Mark 11:24, it says, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Um, it's talking about the faith. Faith is something really important in our Christian life. Have something, uh, have faith in something little. So start practicing this every day. You get to have the ability to face something big that when it's challenging your face, you actually been exercised for long and you be able to make it when something big and dark happens. So the third point about strict training is working with one another. See, we've done our reading Bible and praying and having faith. You are so touched and filled with God's love and you, you want to say to God that, Jesus, thank you for loving me. I want to love you back. Thank you for doing all these things for me. You know what God would say back to us? He would say, my dear child, if you want to love me, love my people. That's how he wants us to demonstrate our love to him. In John 13, 35, it says that your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. So it's our love with one another. That's how we show we are the disciples, not just our words, not just we saying that I love Jesus. It's how you interact with the people around you. And also in Ephesians 4, 2, it says that with all gentle, quiet behavior, taking whatever comes, putting up with one another in love. I love how um, God used the words putting up with one another. It shows that he understands we as human beings, we are difficult to deal with. Sometimes we're annoying. It's just very hard to 
uh, get along with everybody. So God says, I understand. I know it's difficult, people are annoying, but just pull up with one another. Just be nice, be gentle. And also he says, pull up with, uh, put up with one another in love. So what is love? God equals love. I want you to remember this formula today, God equals love. So God says, it's difficult to do, but if you are in me, we can do it together. The last point of strict training is going through difficulties. I know it sounds hard, but unfortunately, it's something that we have to go through. To be able to grow, to be able to become a better Christian, we need to go through difficulty times. Uh, in Isaiah 41.10, it says that, do, uh, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. When we are going through difficulties, God don't say that, come on, you can do it, just go for it. That's not God cheers us up. God would whisper to our ears and saying that, I understand it's difficult. I understand you can't do it, but I can do it. Trust me. I'm here with you. I will hold your hands. We'll go through it together. I will pray that um, this soft whisper will stay with every one of us. When you are in darkness, when you feel alone, when you feel like you're powerless, I hope this soft whisper will pop up in your mind. God is saying that it's okay. You can't do it. That's fine. I can do it. Trust me. I'm holding your hands here. And also in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 31, 6, it says that be strong and be courageous. Do not be afraid or tremble, uh, tremble at them. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you. He will not fail you, fail you or forsake you. So God promised us. I want you to remember his promise when you go through your difficulty times because once we past that time, when you look back, you have realized why God put you in that difficult position. He will never give you something you cannot overcome. Maybe it's, it can be challenging, can be stressful, but once we step over it, you, have, you will realize how much you have grown, how much you have become a better Christian. Um, this job um, stories in the Bible about uh, Job, Ruth, Daniel, Joseph, Look at how in their stories that God is constantly reminding us going through difficulty times is not that terrible and we can go through it with his help. Um, are you still keeping your Bibles open? So we're going to read the last two verses. 1 Corinthians 9, 26-27. Sarah, can you please read out for us? 1 Corinthians 9, 26 and 27, it says, Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it, to my, make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Thank you. So, what is Paul talking about here? strike a blow to my body. So who am I competing with or who are we competing with in this context? I think Paul is saying that most of the time ourselves is the biggest enemy for us, the biggest obstacle. Um, we need to um, knowing our mind, our body, so what you want your body to do and yeah, and the, it continues saying that um, make it my slave, make my body my slave. I can't, I can't find it here. <laughs> or does make my? You change it again. Here. 
anyway, um, so the question there was, what does making my body my slave mean? What does it mean? What is Paul talking about here in this verse? I think self-discipline is the point that he's trying to tell us that how we um, sometimes facing difficult situations and we're having all those excuses thinking that's not possible because of the situation and you never realize you actually making this thing not possible just because you're denying it yourself. And uh, I had uh, two examples there anyway. Uh, was, do you remember when Jesus was um, in the wilderness for 40 days? He was um, not having anything to eat or drink. And he was attempted by the devil. And his body was at the weakest point. But his mind was really strong. That's why he uh, overcome all those temptations. So, and also, who do I have? Oh, Daniel. Yes. Um, he was kept captive in a foreign country for so long. And he grew up in their culture, in their custom, and he sees other people, how they eat, how they behave, uh, how they practice every day, but because he has very strong mind towards his God, and he kept worshiping his God every day, and he was be able to avoid all those temptations. So that's what Paul is trying to emphasize here, self-discipline, that's something we need to work on. And the last point, um, at the very end of verse 27, it says that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. So Paul is reminding us, please preach what you practice. In pre Please practice what you preach. That's what I wanted to say. Sorry. <laughs> In James... 1.22, be doers of the word and not the hearers only, deceiving yourself. I, said, I think God is um, pointing out to us that if you are not doing my words, you only talk about it, you're only fooling yourself. You're deceiving yourself into a situation thinking that oh, I'm very close to my God. But when you're not practicing it, you're actually not. In Matthew 5.16, in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works. And it gave glory to your Father who, do, who is in heaven. So God, uh, Jesus was talking here. He says that your good work brings glory to your heavenly Father, not your just the talking part. It's your actual doing. So he warned us to be the doers and to use our action, to practice what we preach, to practice what we believe. So that concludes my uh, talk for the running of the race of life. I had four points of how to train for your race. Read your Bible daily, pray, walk with one another, going through difficulty times. It's, it may not suit your race. We all on our own journey. We are running towards, hopefully, the everlasting crown. And what do you think you need to train for, training for? What do you think is gonna keep you on the track and eventually bring you to the everlasting crown? You, I encourage you to think about it and having your own personal training strategies that you would carry out every day. And I have some questions to ask every one of you here. So think about it. Where are you today in this race of life? And how's your relationship with Jesus? And are you sure you will get to that everlasting crown? You know what the good news is? In God's race, not like in the Olympic Games or Commonwealth Games, only one get the medal prize at the end. In God's race, we will all can get this everlasting crown if you are running towards Jesus.
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your love. Thank you so much for Jesus sacrificing his life for us. And Lord, we thank you for giving every one of us a chance to participate in this race. Lord, we want to keep our eye on you constantly. Please keep every, uh, every one of us close to you. Send your Holy Spirit. Help us to stay on the right track. And help us to run this race of life. Eventually, we will run into heaven with you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.